Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about two NASs. We want to compare two Intel based quad core NASs that are available in the market right now at a 2020 release of new hardware from both the brands. However, let's get a disclaimer straight out of the way. This device here, as featured on the title of this video, is supposed to be the TS453D. Unfortunately, my TS453D is not here in the studio. I am utilizing a TS653D for this video. So this is in fact the six bay model, but it's a stand-in for the four bay. So the four bay is about yay smaller, I'd say. And ultimately, the hardware spec is identical. The only reason it is in any different is because of those two extra bays. So I thought we'll keep it in here for this comparison rather than using a graphic on screen. But once again, we are looking at the TS453D from QNAP, currently retailing for about 550 nicker. Uh, uh, you know, it's span.com or lots of other retailers too. And we're comparing it against the brand new TerraMaster, the F4422. This is their 10 GBE affordable Intel powered NAS solution, arriving about 420 to 430 quid. So I have compared this device against other brands, but what I will say straight away is yes, there is a disparity between these two devices of about 100 to 120 quid if you shop around, depending on where you buy and the tax and stuff like that. But the new QNAP does make up for a lot of that money. As I mentioned in my Synology video, the um, 10 GBE now solution from TerraMaster is a good solution, and it really is, as I hope this video will convince you, and particularly a 10 GBE solution. But the QNAP brings a hell of a lot to the table and does justify that price tag. The real question for you is going to be whether you need all the bells and whistles they've included in that price tag, or can you save yourself a bit of money or plow that money into hard drive storage or cables and go for the TerraMaster. So, what have both of these devices got in common? Well, they're both Intel powered. They've both got a quad-core Celeron inside. They've both got four gig of, DD, uh, of, of memory, but both of them can also be upgraded officially to eight gig of memory. They both arrive with support of the very latest SATA hard drives. So again, that's your 16 TB Seagate Iron Wolf. There's some 18 TBs on the horizon, a huge amount of storage, up to 64 terabytes of storage raw, or of course, 48 terabytes RAID 5 and 32 terabytes in a RAID 10 or a couple of RAID 1s. There's a RAID 0, of course, if you want to combine them all, but I don't recommend that. Both of them arrive with support of SSD caching, where you can utilize some of the storage bays, install one or two SSDs, and utilize those to improve the internal operation speed, leveraging the higher IOPS uh, and access times available from an SSD towards a slower but ultimately larger capacity hard drive array. And on top of that, they both arrive with link um, a support of dual LAN on the rear and link aggregation, although network interfaces on these two devices is one of the biggest areas of disparity between them. They both arrive with USB 3 ports, although it has to be said there are more USB ports on the QNAP, but we'll touch on that more later on. And they both arrive with a quite similar non-lockable front-based um, mechanism. So let's talk about what's different between these two devices. Before we go any further going deeper in, Let's talk about that CPU and memory. Now, the TerraMaster arrives with a J3455. That's a quad-core 1.5 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.3 gigahertz with support of 4K and 1080p transcoding in Plex and natively, although natively is a very, very different story on a TerraMaster. On top of that, that arrives with AES encryption and a great floating point for a multi-user, multi-app environment simultaneously. On top of that, the device arrives with that 4 gig of DDR3 memory that can be upgraded to 8 gig. Now, on the face of it, those are some great numbers moving forward. But it has to be said, the QNAP largely decimates in every way on this. For a start, it arrives with an Intel J4125, a much newer, higher frequency CPU, a 2.0 gigahertz processor. Um, per core that can be burst up to 2.7 and again 4k and 1080p transcoding as well as a great floating point it also arrives with support of ddr4 memory as well so with ddr4 on the table you've got a higher frequency of 1600 uh, from this device on its memory versus 2400 megahertz memory and again better a uh, more uh, efficient a more powerful memory and better a more efficient a more powerful CPU as well, mean that the QNAP just gives you a lot more of that internal operation improvements 
from the internal hardware. In terms of ports and connections, the front, both of them, are pretty featureless, though I would say that the QNAP has a better look design ways. Remember, the 4-bay is just this same device, only about 2 inches uh, narrower. On top of that, you've got all these multiple LEDs built into the front of the QNAP and a USB 3 port on the front and a copy button. The TerraMaster, on the other hand, arrives with those four bays, some LEDs on the front, which are quite small, uh, and no USB there on the front. And although both of them have got plastic trays for those hard drives, it's worth highlighting that the QNAP's trays are click and load, and you can install drives a lot quicker and easier inside those. But I will say the trays inside the TerraMaster do seem a little bit more rugged, but they require a screwdriver. Uh, and the screws are included with the device. Um, in terms of power consumption, the TerraMaster has got the higher power, uh, the PSU, although they're both external. What I will say is the TerraMaster features 10 GBE, so it will need that extra oomph. And if we look at the rear ports of these devices, we can take a good look about how you're going to be interacting with this device. Now, there's meant to be a backplane there. I'm currently utilizing this for 10 GBE testing, so unfortunately that backplane's not there, but it's normally covered. Now, the TerraMaster has got two USB 3 ports up here that can be used for external storage, USB printers, UPSs, that sort of thing. On top of that, two 1 GBE ports there that could be link aggregated to 2 GBE and that 10 gigabit Ethernet port there on the rear. And if you're running a 10G setup, that must be very attractive to get an Intel 4 gig quad core NAS. It's a 4 bay with RAID support and a 10 GBE at that price point it is incredibly affordable at that 424 30 point the QNAP on the other hand arrives with a different kind of support it arrives with four more USB ports here so you've got a USB 3 on the front another USB 3 here and three USB 2 and that's because this device has a large contingent of support for things like KVM keyboard video mouse so you have got an HDMI port here, which is HDMI 2.0a, which means you can get 4K 60 frames per second locally with much, much, you know, near zero latency to enjoy, as well as a dedicated application to utilize over HDMI, your VMs, your surveillance, office tools, standalone Linux, Ubuntu PC, and more, all of them with both the HDMI port and the use of keyboard, mouse, remote controls, joypads. You can turn this thing into an arcade server if you want, a video that I am working on. Now, on top of that, you have got two LAN ports there, but these LAN ports are 2.5 GBE each. So although this isn't a 10G NAS, it does have two ports, each of which can give you 2.5 GBE or 250 meg, which can then be combined to a 5 GBE or potential 500 megabytes per second transmission speed, which, although not 10, is still lovely to be included at that price. On top of that, it's worth talking about warranty real quick. The TerraMaster arrived with two years warranty, the QNAP with three, and that, again, is one of those things that factors into the price. It's about how you interact with the device in your environment and how long it's gonna last. And the final thing about this device, and again, bear in mind this is still the 6-bay, but it is near enough identical. On the 4-bay device, you've got one large single fan, but on top of that, you have got a PCIe slot. PCIe Gen 2 times 2 So again, you can install 10GBE network cards. You can install M2 NVMe cache cards. You can even install those cache cards or SSD cards, the QM2 series, and have them as a raw area of storage. There's even a combined card from QNAP that's got both NVMe SSD and 10GBE on one card. You pop it inside, use it for raw storage, use it for caching, and all of it over 10 GBE. Yes, you've got to pay extra, another 200 odd quid for that card. But what I'm saying is the QNAP doesn't remove 10 GBE from the table. It just makes you pay a bit extra. And if you factor that in, it's an even bigger price disparity. But still, nevertheless, you are seemingly getting a lot for your money from the QNAP. But can't overlook that 10 GBE. That is a solid win there. And although the CPU between them has a huge disparity with the TerraMaster being probably the lower of the two CPU, CPU benchmark rating it somewhere between 21 and 2500, with the CPU in the QNAP well in excess of 3000 on CPU benchmark, you're just getting more for your money in terms of hardware on the QNAP. But in terms of software, that's where things are really interesting because 
first and foremost, we've got to give TerraMaster their props. They have produced a great bit of software. For, one of, for being one of the youngest brands in network attached storage, the TOS platform where you can set up the device with a mobile phone app, you can in there's a whole myriad of first and third party applications to install as well as client applications and a few mobile applications too for iOS and Android. It has to be said that as good as that platform is and as fluid as it is now, as evolved as it has become over the years to a point where it reminds me of a generation or two ago, the Synology platform in terms of aesthetic design and responsiveness, something Synology have worked on even more with background socket stuff. The QNAP just brings so much. Their applications, the virtual machine tool, virtualization station, QVR Pro and surveillance station, two dedicated surveillance tools there. Um, Linux station, container station, HD station, all built in. Photo, music and video station, as well as both of them arriving with support of Plex Media Server, you probably will get more out of that QNAP there. On top of that, there is the idea that when it comes to backups, although you've got a few tools built into the TerraMaster series, allowing you to back up NAS to USB, NAS to NAS, NAS to cloud, Hybrid Backup Sync 3 from QNAP is astounding and a great backup tool for one and two way syncs as well as Apple Time Machine, R-Sync, real-time remote replication and more. Then you've got Virtual JBrod, Hybrid Mount and all of these great evolved tools from QNAP along with QSearch, QFiling. There's just so much in terms of hardware and software that you get with the QNAP that it's just impossible to ignore. But that 10 GBE, man, that is just something we can't just sweep under the rug. Although in every other way, the QNAP seemingly wins this, the TerraMaster brings the most affordable 10 GBE Intel 4 gig NAS that's 4 bay RAID enabled we've ever had here on the channel. And if 10 GBE is of such a high priority to you and you don't intend to use the first party software from your NAS provider, the TerraMaster is a very solid choice. And remember, it's a four bay, so you put in four hard drives, you're probably gonna get somewhere between four, 500 meg, maybe close to six with enterprise grade drives, 256 cache, 720, uh, 7200 RPM. With SSDs, you're gonna pip over 700, and with the right RAID configuration, you might hit eight. So those options are available on this, along with BTRFS, of course, with file self healing, um, shared folder, um, easy copy, and background snapshots having less of an impact on your hardware architecture, thanks to BTRFS. The QNAP utilizes EXT4, and although EXT4 is on both, you may be interested in BTRFS. What I'm saying is, the TerraMaster is, just because it's the more budget solution, doesn't mean it's a bad solution. It's just leveraging how much you want to invest in a NAS in a different way. The QNAP is asking you to spread the money you're spending across a lot of hardware and software advantages, some of which you might not use. And that's why the TerraMaster is interesting because it advertises itself as an affordable 10G solution and it delivers and that's what's important. Me personally, I'd probably go for the QNAP, but I know that 10GBE has ways and means you can always get to it eventually but thank you so much for watching i hope you guys have enjoyed this video do let me know if you have click like if you've enjoyed it click subscribe to learn more and visit the links in the description to both nascompares and span.com i will see you next time